Uh, hello, my name is Lowell, pronouns he, him, and we are playing another session of a hack that I did uh, of changing the loss that has been drifted over to uh, a, a similar setting, which I'm calling Hearts of Yokai. It's kind of a placeholder name for that. Uh, and uh, this is a PPTA game. We've done a, a few sessions of it, uh, uh, and we skipped for Thanksgiving uh, last week and uh, for me being sick the week before that. So there we are. Uh, we are taking up uh, with our characters in the wake of the situation. And what I know is this. I know that there was a party and that most of the important changelings, the important yokai, the important changed were present there at this meeting. And uh, in the midst of that event, uh, the dominus of the Court of Tides was decapitated uh, and uh, a, another character, I believe, uh, Spinning Jenny, uh, was run through with the dream blade that came out of the wall. And immediately after that, uh, Mirage, as they say, cheesed it, uh, was the first out the door, uh, as all of this went down, uh, other people began fleeing as well. Uh, and then, uh, uh, Lord Bloom, uh, rushed over to Squeak Tune, Squeak Tune, who had already lifted something earlier on in the evening. Uh, from the party. Uh, 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 then the two of you took off to escape and Squeak Tune uh, uh, took the murder weapon uh, with her. So she has uh, the, the, the blade uh, and fled out into the night. And that's where we left off. I think we start the next session with the question scale you were not at the party where were you um so i know that we didn't go down the path we probably didn't even have time to see scale go to that fighting ring that macaulay had given him the card for but mm -hmm. maybe if it's all right lowell we see scale like walking out of this gym or arena or whatever it is and like unwrapping uh, bandages from his hands as if he's just come out of the boxing ring absolutely it's sort of a a, a first trial uh, uh there uh, uh we see you uh still a little worse for wear it explains why we haven't cleared a couple of the the marks uh on your uh moods right now uh and uh so you are are heading out uh, uh into the evening uh when you will get a call uh on your phone not from one of your colleagues one of your members of your community but a call from hopscotch takebacks And I guess I stare at the phone for a while, and it's not the usual, how do I even use this thing <laughs> that scale might have, but it's like, do I want to talk to this person who I really don't care for? Um, so I, I think I'll eventually pick up. Oh, darling, I was about to, to, to hang up. Thank you for answering. Um, scale, uh, Wait, where are you right now? You're not back at your theater, are you? No, I um yeah, I'm just uh, walking home. So some things happened at the party for the Court of Tides and like all the courts at 
some things happened and there are some people looking for your colleagues right now. Okay. Because someone cut the head off of the Dominus of the Court of Tides <laughs> uh, and stabbed another person. And the person who was last seen talking to them was your colleague Mirage. And Mirage vanished almost immediately when this happened. Now, it's chaos everywhere uh -huh. right now. Uh, 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 a lot of changelings fled. Uh, a lot of changed fled. Uh, a lot of uh, so uh, some stayed. Uh, uh, your other friends, uh, your other colleagues, Bloom and Squeak Tune, also uh, legged it quite quickly. Um, but I thought that I would call and tell you this. So everyone has run away, but somehow <laughs> it's it's my friends. That you think are there involved. are there are people talking because because they heard that you and Mirage were involved in a uh, a similar incident the day before. Uh, Mirage took off. Mirage had been speaking with Spinning Jenny just before the situation went weird. So uh, people are looking for answers or perhaps a scapegoat someone uh -huh. said they saw a sword fly in through the wall and uh and cut off the head and sapped them but we haven't found a sword okay uh so if anyone wants blood you send them my way hopscotch right that's not my job in this <laughs> all i am doing is telling you what's going on such that you will have to owe me in the future. I'm giving you a heads up. Oh. <clears throat> is that how we're doing this? That's how I've done it. So if you need other things in the future, if you need help, feel free to call me. Yeah, I'll I'll just hang up. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> a, a disgruntled snort, and then a, a hang up. Absolutely. Uh, and where do you head from there? I mean, you would think that I should have the others' phone numbers. Oh, I absolutely would think so. So maybe I'll send one of those all caps, no spaces texts to the group. <laughs> you know. Uh, what's up and then like a separate message let's meet at you know somewhere that isn't home you know someplace that we have met before like un under the fourth street bridge or whatever it is absolutely so let's roll back uh of a, uh, a few minutes uh lord bloom uh uh you you still have a an advance to take if you thought about what you want to take yeah i think the glamorous Awesome. Um, because that fits with what I was doing before with, with the theater. Yeah, so you can do big, major uh, illusions without having to roll the invoke contract, uh, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Uh, Squeak Tune, you are a master of getting out of places and hiding. Uh, that is your forte. Uh, when you and Bloom get out of the, the building, and are out on the streets of the city here. Uh, it's still, you know, uh, uh, evening. So there are people out, you know, uh, for the evening meals and drinking and going to clubs and things like that. So there are people around. Uh, uh, and you've got this sword in your hand uh, uh, that is covered in blood. Uh, so what do you want to do? Um. Um, okay, so I'm with Lord Bloom. Am I? Is Mirage also here or no? No, I don't think Mirage is with you at this moment. We'll we'll come to Mirage in a moment. Okay, I have a giant sword. 
Um, I try to find the closest trash can to stuff it in there. Okay. Uh, so you uh, head to one of the, the alleys where there's perhaps a uh, a bin uh, yeah. uh, uh, there at Bloom. You'll see uh, a squeak tune uh, slip down an alley uh, and there's the clanging sound uh, uh, as as Squeak Tune goes to throw the sword into the, the dumpster. Yes, good. At least we're not carrying around a murder weapon there anymore. Uh, Lord, but can you hide it? Can you can you hide it? Uh well, I can try. Yeah, I will try to hide it. I think I'm rolling with... No, I can't roll with fear. I have fear mark. Yeah. <laughs> which which means either that you've gone past fear or that you can't even just control yourself when you're in that like feared state. However you want to yeah. read that. Um, um, I think... I think I've gone past that then. I think I'm rolling with Paul. Okay. Like I'm just, I, I'm just uh, solution focused, just trying to figure out, uh, yeah, what do we do now? Absolutely. Let's uh, go ahead and have you roll. Yeah. I uh, do the roller. Die. Ten. That is a ten. Uh, so I believe you get to pick three. They do. Um, so I was curious, there's one option that says one sense is not excluded from it. Does that mean it affects another sense? This beyond vision or? So generally, uh, it can it fool a couple of senses, mm -hmm. like touch and vision. Uh, with this, you can add, you know, smell or taste or hearing, cool. any of those things to it. And you have three picks. Yeah, uh, I want to cover vision, touch, and smell. Okay. So that's one choice for one. Extra. Yeah. So that anyone is... trying to track it with a uh, uh, scent will be unable yeah. to track it. Yeah. Um... And there's not. There's several that don't make sense. So I guess it will last for a long time. Okay. And I mean, if we're hiding it, I guess I'm I'm making it look like something else. Um, so it can respond to persons interacting with it. Okay. Could so what does it that? look like? If somebody uh, were to go in here and find it, yeah. what would they think it is? So I think it makes sense to make it something that's kind of like at least a, a similar type of, of object. Okay. Um, I was think should probably be heavy. No, because like sense of touch, would that like include weight? Yeah. Cool. Um, then I think I'm thinking like a, a, a broom, uh, like okay. a bro broken off broom. Okay. Uh, so a, a broomstick uh, yeah, uh, yeah. in there. Uh, yeah, you will. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, well, we don't need to hide it then. You want to Do carry we? it around? Well, well, it might be useful, actually. Yes, we should. I'll take it. Yeah, very useful. Or maybe you should carry it. Just, just thinking, just looking at himself holding the broomstick and then handing it over to to a squeak tune. Uh, I think it looks better on you. Okay, I'll take it. And yet, to, to I mean, for weight and the touch of it and the the look, I mean, it it feels like you're carrying a broomstick. That's it. I like. Okay, I'm gonna sweep the floor with it. Does it? When you swing that around, you will uh, cut a uh, uh, a slice into the ground, uh, the concrete of the the, the ground. Uh, 
Okay, let's go. And I think, and we'll come back to you two in a moment, that's when you get the text. Mirage, you were first out the door. Yeah, oh, uh, my camera. <laughs> um, in shock, I imagine. Uh, I will want to get somewhere where I feel safe. Like I'm trying to use the dream road to just get just get home. This is maybe not the wisest decision, but I will get home via a road that probably people won't won't see, and also I might be faster there and gather myself. And then I can think about what I want to do. Absolutely. Let's. Uh, this is a chaotic situation for you, so let's have you roll. Absolutely chaotic. Yes. Oh yeah. Let's let me roll. That I I need I need so many XP. I think. <laughs> I've got two dice. What am I rolling with? Yeah. I can roll with fear. I can roll with sorrow. I do not think this is uh, very good with joy. I think I'll try to roll it with power. Okay. Uh, try to get a little bit of control over the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Go, it's an eight. It's not a failure. Okay. So you will jump into into the dream. Uh, uh, find someone who's dozing uh, uh, at a cafe or a taxi driver sleeping in a cab or or someone like that out on the street. Uh, and you will jump into that and make your way home. The thing that will strike you as you move from dream to dream on the way back to the theater is how many swords there are in these dreams. Uh, people carrying swords, people like the Ten of Swords tarot card impaled mm -hmm. by them, uh, people like clambering through a pile of swords it's it's throughout the dreams as you make your way uh, along. Uh, and I think even at one point, you'll probably see another one of those swords fly past you through the dream. It doesn't hit me, right? It doesn't hit you, no. But these are the swords. Remember, you, you did your senses yeah. out when you first found the sword, yeah. and you could tell that there were a bunch of them out there uh, and there apparently still are some still flying around. But okay. I'm not make... trying to catch one for now. I'm just <laughs> really <to> get... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. This uh, I have characters who would do that, but not this one. Uh, no, I'm getting home. And then, I, then and, I'll look at my phone maybe. Okay. And, and where do you go? Like, what, what, what part of the theater is the place that now that you're, you're, you're trying to figure out what to do, where would you go in the theater? I think if this is a theater, there's got to be a gangway or something where you can stand uh, where the lighting is somewhere up there, out of the way, where people wouldn't wouldn't think maybe to look. Um, yeah, you'll arrive there, catch your breath, uh, and as you say, look at your phone, and yeah. you will see uh, a text come in from Scale. Oh, oh no, oh no. And what was the text? Remind me. Uh, uh what, what asking oh, for the yeah. group to meet? Yeah. Okay. And what is the place you want them to meet at scale? That's not I, a theater. Yeah, I said like under the Fourth Street Bridge. Okay. Um, maybe it's somewhere we've met before or sheltered from a heavy fog or something like this. Absolutely. Uh, so you will get that text, Mirage. And what do you do? Okay. Meeting with the others sounds like a good idea. Hopefully they won't just want to kill me, but who knows? Anyway, I think I will take the shape of another being. Um, because I can. I yeah. have that, that move. And, uh, I think that will, I will invent someone here that will maybe... Uh, uh, a witch, uh, a fog witch, who is mostly like a, like 
maybe um, not not precisely a homeless lady, but uh, you know, someone who runs around and talks the fog and the ghosts a lot. Absolutely. I will try to take her shape. I have so, to roll, roll for this again, right? Uh, well, well, we'll have you roll if you're confronted. I think right oh, now okay. you can take yeah. that shape. Cool. Uh, uh, and 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 blend blend in and head out. Uh, squeak tune, Lord Bloom. Your your phones have gone off. You'll look. You'll see that text from Scale. Good. Uh, we, we should go there. We need to meet up with the others and figure out what's going on and where we can uh, where we can hide. Yeah, I'll I'll text back. Um, like, I'll like put the sword, the broom sword, on my shoulder and then text <laughs> uh, with one hand, and I'll just like a lot of like OMG, it was so scary. <laughs> Um, a lot of like exclamation marks and it was like uh, I don't use autocorrect so <laughs> it's just like h- hard to parse um, and then like just constantly texting while we're like going towards wherever we're supposed to meet up yeah scale, scale as you as you take off at a trot you'll get that of the text coming in uh, as Squeak Tune uh, continues I mean, so like having a little mouse in my pocket. Yes. <laughs> uh, so let me ask, I'm going to come to ask the same question to, to, to Lord Scale here, or Mr. Scale, or Scale, just Scale. Uh, uh, Lord Bloom is quick tuned. Uh, are you, is there anything I should know about the way that you are approaching getting to the Fourth Street Bridge, given the chaos and, and everything? Um, I mean, I could try doing a glamour for us as well, um, but I'm not sure. Is, is there like, are there changelings? Like, like, is there a risk involved with that? Like, other change, other change to being able to like track the magic or sense that it's been used. So that it would be advantageous to just get there quickly without doing anything. Various changed have various powers. Mm-hmm. They can invoke contracts to search. Uh, now, mind you, your glamours affect both mundane and magical things. Uh, 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 but you don't know kind of what the the, the chaos is. Yeah. Uh, uh, the court of tides is the court of oracles. They can see the future. They can kind of scan in the present. Uh, like all of the change, they're very bad at reading the past uh, because the change, when they read the past, uh, they impose their own viewpoint on it. They can't help but rewrite history when they uh, do that. It's part of the magic. Uh, so so they, there could be people tracking you, but uh, glamoured or not glamoured, it, it may well be the same same result. So you may just want to get there quickly. Yeah, then I think this also feels like a very like bay thing. I think we're, we're just taking a very unpredicted, unpredictable path like taking strange turns and jumping on onto a bus and just going for one stop and and uh, like grabbing a, a bicycle and using that for like two streets and and just changing things up in a way that feels intuitive to us that's like taking turns deciding which, which way to go and what what uh, form of transport uh squeak tune uh, uh, you have a, a, a skill with escaping. You've got the the shinies, but you you also just are quite uh, skilled at escaping. If you want to do an escape roll, essentially to evade pursuit, I'd be willing. I think that move would be applicable there. Yeah, I would love to try to escape the current situation 
um, of being uh, being hunted. Um, yeah, and the way that Squeaktoon does it is definitely. Uh, oh, I didn't. I don't have your marks. Yeah, uh, Squeaktoon. Squeaktoon scared or excited? It's hard to say. Um. I feel like Squeaktoon is not scared. Not not the the dominant feeling is not fear because sure. like Lord Bloom is here. Lord Bloom did some uh like changed the weapon and like it just Squeaktoon feels safe because like safe-ish because Lord Bloom can like control the situation is is Squeaktoon's impression. Okay. And so it's like, okay, like this is kind of fun. <laughs> um so I think that Squeaktoon, because they're not as scared, they're like less going into their kind of like changed form and like in terms of the way that they're acting. So it's still like it's a lot of like like pushing up against a wall and like looking to see um if there are like people around or like if there is anything watching that kind of feeling sure. as opposed to like actually slinking uh in an animalic way so uh so that's... joy yes joy okay joy is the game oh well uh i rolled a five <laughs> all right uh so uh is that with the, the added plus one yes Ooh. now you you do have two bonds left you could burn both of those if you wanted to or or we can take the hit <laughs> uh honest do you want to take the hit <laughs> since it'll affect both of it's us fun for me it's it's up to you squeak tune I think that uh, you may recall that you pocketed a gift earlier on, correct? Uh, I I gave the gift away, uh -huh. and and? <laughs> and I left an image of myself behind. <laughs> but as well, earlier on in the evening, you stole one of the gifts from the gift table. Oh, I did. It's true. I did. And I think there is a moment as uh, all of you are going through uh, uh, this uh, when you'll hear a tearing sound and you will see your pocket explode outward in a shower of croissants and candy and wrappers and everything you took off the the side tables just flies out and you will see a great stone panther you you're like you guys are in this this alley that you've been moving down uh uh leaps out onto the ground and looks at you I, and, I freeze. And then it starts mewling, roaring kind of piteously. It is super loud. <laughs> I'm gonna oh my gosh. I I have to pick up I have to pick up my baked goods. <laughs> okay I, I pick up the big <laughs> okay so you're um, running scrambly as this this panther this stone panther is is yowling you are are grabbing up the the things you dropped the nice wrapped packaging stuff and then not wrapped and you're getting it into your other pockets and this panther is kind of following behind you super loud oh, lord I, bloom yeah lord <laughs> what do you do and then i'm going to come to scale yeah uh, is this panther like is it is it like a living thing or is it some some magical uh, uh, 
definitely a magical thing. It's definitely yeah, yeah, a but, yeah. a construct of some kind. So it's not it's not like a living creature as such. Correct. It is is an animated object. Yeah. Then but, I will grab the broomstick slash sword and just walk right at it and try to stab it. Absolutely. I'm very excited about this plan. We'll come back to you and see how that goes in just a moment. Scale, is there anything you are doing uh, on your trip? Or are you going directly there? Or is there anything you want to stop and pick up? Anybody you want to talk to? I mean, I think I'm just heading straight there. Okay. Uh, because I've forgotten how whimsical the others are <laughs> when they go from A to B, you know. <laughs> I thought this was urgent or something. Um, so yeah, I, I'll just walk straight there and I'll I'll be waiting. Yeah, you know, I'll kick in my heels. What's it? What's around the the Fourth Street Bridge? Uh, maybe it's like a, a is it a car bridge that's over or a walk bridge? I think it's like a um, it's like a rail bridge, but it has like this extra bit on the side, which is a footpath. Mm -hmm. Um. Um. So it's um, it's probably always in use up okay. there. You know, there's always the rumble of trains or whatever, or maybe there was when the town was busier. But yeah, it's still in use. Yeah, uh, I think you kind of uh, 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 sit there. You know, you'll see people out walking for the evening. It's probably not the the best part of town, but uh, people walking there. You might even see some of those punk cultists. Uh, uh, like what's the what's the the symbol uh you know that they've that they've you know penned or white whited into their their leather vests and jackets and jeans and things i think it's like a broken crown you know like one of those like classic fairy tale or royal versions but it's just cracked in the middle and at an angle Absolutely. They've got it. It varies from person to person, depending on their skill in, in hand marking these things up, but you'll definitely uh, see them. They, they, they give you wide berth. They, they stay well away from you there. Uh, and I think sh sh a bit longer than you would have expected after you arrive, uh, you will see this shambling figure mirage you want to describe what this fog which what what scale we'll see um i will uh probably have some called up some fog uh i think and then you will see um it's not a specific fog which is just some generic looking witchy person older woman gre slightly greasy hair with a uh, head cut head scarf scarf mm -hmm. with a scarf over her head um and and uh, mumbling a little to herself um which might actually give you a hint about because she's mumbling about oh, those blades i don't get it what what's going on with that I, it wasn't me you know um and i i'm not sure if mirage is acting or talking to themselves or talking to this fog spirit that they saw they're a little, uh, they're a little frazzled. Uh, uh, you'll see uh, uh, as you hit the, the the under the bridge there, Mirage. You'll finally see Scale there. Oh yes, the fog witch will look at you and say, "Scale, Scale, so good that you're here. It wasn't me. <laughs> I didn't do it." Who are you, lady? Oh, uh, yes, I apologize. I um, <clears throat> I will let go of the, the disguise and it will just dissipate in a waft of fog. It's me. Oh, uh, that makes more sense. Uh, I thought the crazy lady was crazier than usual. Um, what the seen hell? Okay, I got a strange call from Hopscotch. Uh -huh. And... Who did you kill or who did I didn't kill anyone. Uh, I just I I talked to talked to Spinning Ginny and I told her about the blade. 
you know, the, the one that hit me and that you threw out back at its maker. And when she went to go and to talk to platinum, platinum coils, a blade appeared and, and hit her and decapitated him. Them. Oh, um... Her. Her. Platinum coil is her. I, I apologize. Uh, posthumously, I guess. Maybe not. She was said to be a very clairvoyant. So maybe she saw this coming and this is all a ruse or something. Yeah. But I panicked and I ran away and everybody, I think a lot of people saw me run away. Okay, well, yeah, that was mentioned. So oh. do you think it's the same sword? I don't know. Do you think that is the sword that you threw and that 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 it took a long way around to hit whoever? I mean, my luck says, yep, it's the same sword. Oh, 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 oh uh, well, I mean, that that was, and then Platinum Coil shouldn't have started throwing swords around, I guess. I, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I think I definitely, I definitely went back to who threw it at us. Yeah. So, serves a right. Um, Okay, well, it's, the others are on their way, apparently. There are other swords flying around out there, though I saw some of them. So might not have been. So okay. Been. It was a sword, right? It wasn't made of ice. Uh, it seemed like a sword, yeah. Yeah, it seemed like a sword. Okay, good. So there's people looking for us, but we'll wait till the others arrive. They can't be far, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah, maybe that, they, they, they know stuff. That's the moment I cut back and resolve the conflict action with Lord Bloom. Uh, Lord Bloom, what do you want to roll that with? Um, I think at this point it's anger. Like he is, we're, we're, we're just trying, <laughs> we're trying to, to get away and this thing is showing up and being all annoying, I just want it gone. Okay. Pulling with a plus one, that's an 11. That is an 11. So uh, you get to pick uh, three things from the list. Yeah. Um, avoid reprisals, harm, or cost. Mm -hmm. Seems good to me. Um, thing they're forced to change course. Okay. Like, yeah, they some some way they 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 the the panther has to stop doing what it's currently doing and it has to do something different. Okay. And, uh, well. I'm not that interested in inflicting harm, actually. Create an opportunity for you or your allies. You like, could also extricate yourself from the situation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so I think you will stab this thing. That that broomstick yeah. does go into it and marks on it, and this thing will, will yelp, uh, and it will run up the wall, uh, and it runs up this building, uh, and maybe you'll see like a, uh, a, 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 like a bit of a roof tile come crashing down as it starts running across the rooftops away from the two of you. Squeak tune. How much did you lose? I think I was only able to salvage like two because I'm not supposed to eat things that have touched the ground. There's some Sorry, puddles here too. Very disappointing. Yeah. And I think it's also a little bit scary what Lord Bloom did. Like to just something that was just hungry. So I I think I'm like I'm glancing over at Lord Bloom and I don't ask for the broom sword back. I just like I'm, I might just like start scurrying off myself towards where we're supposed to meet. 
Lord Bloom, this broom stick feels really good in your hand. I mean, it feels natural and right. And when you when you struck that thing, it you felt very powerful. Well, I don't think. Yeah, I'm not in the mindset right now where I realize that that's a bad sign. Uh, I'm just focused on we have to get out of here. We have to get to to the others. So, following behind Squeak Tune. Mm -hmm. Uh, Squeak Tune, you'll continue your path. Uh, you've moved things into other pockets securely. Uh, uh, and I think we cut to the two of you, you know, taking a glance at a distance to making sure everything is okay. But you will see scale and mirage there under the bridge. Uh, and uh, the two of you can approach. Yep. I scurry towards them specifically scale um and then like when i get to scale i i think i'll like hide behind scale okay it is somewhat reassuring to be in his shadow i'm following squeak tune and like looking over my shoulder to make sure trying to look up at the rooftops as well to see if that panther is, is still following uh, uh, scale, uh, Lord Bloom arrives. He has apparently fashioned a makeshift weapon because he has a broken off broom handle in his hand. Impressive. Uh, so I think Mirage has brought me up to speed. So, yeah, uh, you just ran, right? I mean, apparently a lot of people just ran, so it's no big deal. I didn't really see that there was any other, there was any point in, in sticking around, especially since we might get stuck if we stuck around. Uh, people who run get chased, uh, in my experience. Yes, um, by Panthers, apparently. <laughs> uh, but you know there's nothing to tie you to this act right well <laughs> uh, I kind of look at, at the broomstick and I think I just like scratch it on the ground like, like Squeak Tune did and, and assume that you will understand that yeah, yeah. this is actually the sword okay Okay, <clears throat> so Hopsert said that people know that we had had an encounter with a dream sword, Mirage and I. I told people at the party that that had happened, yes. Okay. I mean, not a ton of people, but it's not, not well, kept it a secret. I didn't yeah. talk about you, sorry, but maybe or not. Yeah. Um, so I think it's gotten around. So I think we are the suspects. It might help that we actually did it, kind of. Um, we we did. We who did it? We don't know that that that. We, we that, don't. That, yeah. that that was the same sword. If if it didn't look like a broomstick, we might be able to check. If it was the, the, the same one, well, they they, can... they didn't all look this. They don't all look the same, right? They all look very similar. Oh, okay. Then I will say, well, maybe we couldn't. They all look very similar. I saw others fly around in the dreamscape. So mm -hmm. I don't know if they're following me because I've had found a lot of dreams about swords. I don't know if it's because of me or. It's because of something else. I mean, if a, if it had been blades of ice, it would have been me. But uh, swords is is uh, it's not what what she would usually use. 
so I don't know what you think. Like, either find out who sent the sword our way, if it's the same sword, uh, or we go home and we wait for people to knock on the door, and then you know we um, give them what for. Uh, I don't mind. Or alternatively, we find a different place to stay in another city on another continent, perhaps. <laughs> why? Why don't we just put the sword in someone else's house? And then, and the people will chase them. That might work, or maybe they can trace it and uh, find out who has held it or something else. Yeah, if if anyone can do any, you know, psychometry or whatever it is, it's tides right but then they should also be able to figure out that we're not actually the ones who tried to do this but they may not even try because someone was uh, had the idea of giving someone's head on a as a gift and uh, you know now someone is without a head so do you think that's tied to, to, to each other. I mean, that was a totally different head and it also was real. So I know, someone, but... but someone wished for her head to be no, taken off, right? She had she wished for somebody else's head to be taken off. Ah, okay. So, yeah. Just desserts again. I mean, I've got no problem. Yeah, but the, the, the other person didn't know or maybe, oh, maybe Tomorrow's stars told them. I don't know. If, I mean, someone else knows, which means that anyone could know. Right. So. Uh, but also scale through the blade that was in me at whoever had sent it. Yeah. So we, we don't even know if, if it wasn't Platinum. Can we take a look at this sword? Because I just want to know. Mm -hmm. Drop the glamour. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, scale. Uh, do you wish to study this blade? Yeah. So I think it's not just looking; it's like wielding. I think that's probably how I'm more likely to be able to tell. I, um, I have a question. It's maybe a bit indecent, squeak tunes. Do that, do you have a sense of smell that is better than normal? I don't what do you mean normal I mean if I smelled at the sword I would only smell metal but could someone with a better with a better sense of smell could maybe smell blood on it and whose blood it is it's besides platinum royals yeah, it's probably a bad idea I'm sorry I mean I can smell blood I thought everyone could smell blood I can, I can try. Because it was in me. If if it, if it's the same blade that scale through, that it was in me a while ago. I'm yeah, just... I can try. Let let's let's start with scales move, and then uh -huh. we'll come to to squeak tune. Uh scale. What do you want to roll this with? Um. I mean, I'm not sure it's fear, because, I mean, <laughs> I'm not that afraid of it being the same sword. Okay. Um, maybe... Maybe it's power. Maybe... maybe. I haven't really wielded a blade since the Blackwater. Maybe mm -hmm. this brings me back. Yeah, let's have you roll. Okay. Uh, that's 10. That's 10. So you have uh, two hold. You can ask a question. You can reveal a detail. So you can tell me. It's up to you. 
Um, I guess, yeah, those questions are about situations, places, persons. Can I apply those to the sword? Yeah, absolutely. Specifically? Okay. Um, I mean, I guess the this, this straightforward question is, you know, is this the same sword, but like maybe what what's its provenance? So you're, let, let's start with the first question. Yeah. First question okay. is, is this the same sword you threw? Yeah. It is not. Okay. It is not that sword. It is very likey, like it, like it, it takes you a second uh, uh, of swinging it and feeling it and thinking back to the day before when you had that other sword in your hand, but you can tell that this is not quite the same blade. Okay. And your second question? Yeah, I think um like where did it come from or I mean I'm not sure how I'd know who had it last, but um this is sword with a capital S. This is a slice of the platonic idea of a sword it is essentially a sword that's why it's in dream because it's not quite real until you interact with it and there are a bunch more of these flying around the city does that feel like a fair answer yeah yeah uh, so, I mean, like, are all of those also sword, or is this like the ace, and they're like the two to ten or something? Oh no, like that? they are all also sword. Okay. Squeak tune. So this is an interesting thing. Um, I'm looking at playbook moves. I have earned enough um, experience to get. Um, and advance mm -hmm. in terms of like, cause like what, uh, what Mirage mentioned was basically the bloodhound move, um, under welding. Yeah. If I don't have it, what is that? Like, how are you envisioning? Oh, so if you don't have that, so if you wanted to take it, you could take it. But the other thing you can do is you can always essentially echo those kinds of abilities by the, the use contract. If you just want it for this one time, you can like invoke those powers to mm -hmm. to to do the thing. Okay. Um let me read that again. So what is the the purpose of getting, let's say, like the bloodhound move then? Uh, it makes it easier. Uh, the invoke contract has costs and possibly have to mark syncing. Uh, uh, imagine that that that's you kind of doing, yeah, doing mat, uh, like summoning up the powers and the elements, you know, in doing something that's that's a little more risky. Whereas with Bloodhound, you can always do it; it's easier. Interesting. Okay, I see. Cool. Thank you. That that makes sense. Sure. Um don't know if i oh you mark sinking and roll i see um there's also into the undertow that i can do right uh uh into the undertow yeah you could could that means going into the the the, the realm into the waters that surround the paths that eventually yes. head out to the fair lands. Yeah, I can do that to pursue what I want or find what I want. So many <laughs> different options. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing with yeah. the undertow is the undertow means physically leaving the spot to go and do a thing because you yeah. will travel through it. Yes. 
And if I take Hedge Master, that means I can bring my allies with me <laughs> into possible danger. <laughs> I might do that. That sounds that sounds fun. Uh, so yeah. you want to do that? Yes, I think okay. I will. All right. Very interesting. Uh so you want to find out what? Oops. I'm sorry. Um or what is it that you want? I think Mirage said to find trace through blood whoever the sword has pierced is that right am i understanding this right uh mirage um what mirage meant was that maybe the sword had pierced them uh, no not maybe one of those swords had pierced them and then scale threw it back at whoever created the sword so maybe that could be traced that blood on this blade but Which that blood is, is not on this blade because this is not yeah, that blade. Yeah, but maybe we could still trace it and find whoever is responsible for the blade thing, if that's the way we want to go. That's that's find out where these came from. If if that's what we want to do instead of sure running a, running away and absolutely and, and hoping yeah. that this won't follow us. Well, it might follow me. Maybe we should separate. Why do you want to roll that with Squeak Tune? Um, Squeak Tune is scared. <laughs> this okay. is a very reluctant, uh, kind of like, uh, okay, I guess people are trusting me. I have to do this. Um, but definitely very scared of the undertow and also scared of going into danger, looking for danger. Okay. Terrifying. So fear <laughs> and i rolled three or five i rolled a five again so uh you have a couple bonds you could burn both the bonds those bonds or you could take the hit i think maybe for this one i want to burn the bonds Okay. Is there, is there a help move in this? There yes. is, I believe, under basic like a moves, support. a support roll. Uh -huh. uh, they can clear a, a mark move or take one forward. Uh -huh. Yeah. So maybe, I mean, I could do it, or maybe Scale could do it. One of you could do yeah. it. One of us could do it. I mean, it makes sense if I'm talking about the sword. Yeah. What I'm feeling about it to uh, yeah. pass that on to Squeak Tune, right? right? So Squeak Tune, let's let's have scale roll. We'll see what happens. Um, uh, I think I'm rolling with fear. Uh, okay. Because, yeah, finding out where sword comes from, you know. <laughs> Uh, squeak through with a seven. Okay, so that that is a uh, a plus one. You'll share in any potential consequence. And squeak tune. Do you want to burn the bond to get that up to seven? Then. Yeah, I'll mm, I'll burn the bond with Mirage because I think Mirage was the one who turned to me to to suggest this, and mm -hmm. so it's kind of like I'm drawing on. Uh, Mirage's expectation of me. Um, yeah, I'll get it up to a seven. Yeah. So on a seven to nine, pick one of the the drawbacks at the bottom, and then I will pick one. <laughs> Dunna, you also must pick one of those drawbacks because you share in the cost here. Great. Okay. Um, which... Sorry, I missed Under, exactly. Into the undertow on oh, situational yeah. moves in the first column. Oh, okay. I'm looking on the wrong tab. Um, and clarity is actually sinking there. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with sinking. Okay. 
I mean, this is what I'm afraid of, really, you know. Right. And squeak tune? Hmm. Oh, these are all so fun. Um, what is my sinking? I think my sinking is at one. I need to get to five to, to like have something happen, right? That's correct. Like bad things happen. Okay. I will definitely take a sinking as okay. well. I will think about what I'm going to pick here as we take our first break. And then we're going to go into the undertow. It's the first time. We've seen you walk through Dream Mirage, but we haven't seen what the undertow look like. It's the equivalent of the hedge from Changeling, but it is a more watery base. So we're going to talk about that, what that looks like when we come back and explore that uh, as you travel to where you need, need to go. Uh, so let's take our first break. Let's take 10 and we will continue on. So the undertow connects to the, the, the mundane, in the real world to outside of sort of dream the undertow is something different it is a magical space that people physically travel through and here it is the shallows where it connects sort of to the mundane world it gets deeper as it goes out and there are islands and places that are out there that's where the market is it's where other creatures live but the further you get out the more dangerous it is that it will pull you under and it will drag you out to where the takers are and sometimes the takers are patrolling these waters uh but when you come through here at the beginning there is that sense of being slightly underwater, but you can still feel the real world. You can still sense it. You can still see it. The deeper you get outwards, uh, the less visible it is, the more the, the scenery changes. Uh, but what's another detail, a bit that we're going to see on screen when we're traveling through the, the undertow, watery or sea-based or something like that. And of course, in Changeling, it's a hedge made of thorns that is around you and has paths that change size here. So uh, Squeak Tune, you're leading the way. You open up the undertow. So what's something that we see in this traversal? I think the texture of the undertow is it's a lot denser than water so it feels like you could you can feel it like gliding on you mm -hmm. in a way that is like it's like slippery but it like you 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 feel it much it's like a different sensation I guess like when you have uh, uh, very soft water that's been through its water softener, it has a kind of an oily feel to it, but maybe that enhanced to kind yeah, of passing probably. over you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, as you move through it, it is a different physical sensation as you move down into it. Uh, do you think it's warm, cold? Does it have motion to it, Squeak Tune? Um, I think it definitely has a lot of different currents to it. Okay. So when when you walk, that's like, or when you, I don't know, when you wade through it, it it's constantly like pushing and pulling you in different directions. Okay. Um, so so it, it is that that kind of slight fighting against it as you as you move your your way through here, uh, Mirage. What's another thing that we'll see or feel or hear here as you begin to 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 move through the undertow? I think occasionally there are things things swimming in it, like you can see these mirages, shadows of other stuff, like you see a snowflake here, or maybe um, some something that that might be 
might be an octopus or something altogether different. Is that a is that a treasure ring or something over there? No, it's just it, it was just a sh shadow, maybe. Yeah. Something yeah, I, like that. I, I think that uh, in places where there are things that look like treasure, those are off the beaten path. It it invites you to to move that way to go deeper into the undertow to to get what is there there is a sense of this this whole thing kind of trying to lure you out into the deeper waters and uh, i love the idea of the as you said these these shadows and these things that are moving around uh in those waters what else do we see scale in this this traversal here um I'm not sure if the water is kind of cold or just kind of comfortably uh warm but either way we can sort of start to feel this numbness you know initially in the limbs or fingertips that are in the water but then slowly spreading and maybe it's not just physical it's kind of mental or emotional as well uh, that numbness, maybe losing a sense of of focus, of of direction as well. There, uh, uh, even as as your senses start getting a little bit dulled. Uh, finally, Lord Bloom, what's another thing that we see here? Uh, I think as you as we passed from like, like definitely cross. The, the border or the threshold when we're definitely into the undertow. There's a sense of like losing your footing and, and like plunging down into, uh, into the water. But because of this numbness, it's not like, it's not as terrifying as it would be otherwise. And, and there's a sense of like losing your direction, like losing the sense of, of what, which way is up. It takes Squeak Tune to kind of focus you all. Squeak Tune is the, the person who has, has done this, kind of leading that, that when you do do those plummets, they're able to kind of keep you all centered as you're moving along. Uh, and the deeper you get, the more there's that kind of kick up from your steps, uh, kind of in slow motion of debris and dirt. And sometimes the 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 water gets darker uh, uh, again, the tint of blue getting deeper, uh, but eventually you will find your way by instinct, by magic, by some path that you have set up squeak tune, you will find yourself in a place and then you have to kind of swim upwards to draw you and your companions out of here. Uh, this is what you're good at. You took this as a, a, a move. So this is something that you are skilled at doing. Uh, what does it look like when you four come back out into the real world? Is it just a transition? Is there water? Is there illusionary water? Is there something else? What do we see, Squeak Tune? Um. I think our forms are a bit blurred in the undertow, right? So mm -hmm. when we emerge from it, it's like the the edges sharpen. Come into resolution as the four of you come out and you are in a fairly substantial concrete room. Uh, it's clearly some kind of industrial basement. It's fairly large. There are some stone pillars uh there's a big heavy door off to the side uh with like steps going up to it uh you can hear is it the floor above or another floor above you hear the the sounds of heavy music like maybe maybe electronic maybe something else just pounding uh on there and in the middle of the floor, as the four of you come out, 
uh, you will see that there are markings and etchings around sigils and symbols. Uh, and you will see this, you'd guess, uh, 30-year-old guy uh, in makeshift robes. They're not very nice. Uh, they're, they're clearly kind of put together. There's a, a stack of books and things beside. Uh, he's in the center of this uh, whatever kind of ritual sigil symbol uh, is here. And he's mostly propped up by the fact that that sword has gone straight through his throat and uh, kind of has fallen like a triangle back uh, uh, onto the thing. And he's kind of uh, stuck on this. And there is a look of frozen rictus surprise on his face. It also looks like maybe there were other people here and they have run. So this is a different sword, right? Or yes. is this our sword? I mean, this is the sword I threw, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you'll, you'll take a close look at Yes, this is in fact the sword. It probably still has some of Mirage's blood on it. Uh, and yes, it is there through this cultist. A punk cultist, right? <laughs> yeah, it looks like 30. Uh, it, it, hair dyed black to kind of hide any kind of gray that's starting. Uh, uh, the robes, not particularly well made. They haven't done any kind of stitching. They've more like drawn in the sigils on the robe with, with permanent marker. Uh, uh, and there's some sort of magical ceremony that was being done. So do we think this magical ritual is what's causing all these swords to be in the dream? Oh, I don't know. Because um, I don't know where the off switch for this pentagram is, but you know. Maybe we can study this. So you kind of go over the, this person's been dead well over a day you know, sort of lines up with the time uh yeah. I, I don't want to study the dead person i want to study whatever ritual he was doing sure you're gonna to have to go over by him and, and look at the stuff and and probably at some point move his body out of the way to to, oh. to get a good look okay oh i can help you do that oh i'm like weirdly callous just like yeah. pulling that sword out and then like lugging the body and just kind of like i mean i assume it's pretty heavy well it's heavy but i'm also a wild wing um so like like it's a bit of an effort but yeah. again like very callous not like treating it like absolutely person. that 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 sword comes into your hand when you draw it out uh, uh very easily uh, uh, and you'll kind of drag the, the body uh, out of that, that circle so that Mirage can look at it. I, I think it'll take you a minute yeah. to realize you've still got a hold of that blade. Oh, wait, I, I have a question. Does this count as supporting? <laughs> Am I supporting Yeah, Mirage? I like that. Mirage, do you hear me? <laughs> Am I supporting I, of you? Yes, I understand that you are supporting of me. I am very grateful that you are supporting of me. <laughs> Thank you for moving that body. I did not want to touch it. The dead bodies are cold. I don't like cold. So Undertow is cold enough. Squeak Tune, why don't you roll your support? Yeah. Um <laughs> what am I what am I feeling? Um I am eager to help. I feel okay. like I can I can be helpful right now. So I feel jo I feel joyous. Okay. Ooh, wow. Okay. So that is a 13. Okay. Nice. Uh so really uh 
Mirage can clear a mood or take one plus one forward. And you, Squeak Tune, can clear a mood, uh, ask them a question, or you can take a bond with them. I want a bond. Okay. I think I, I feel I feel bonded to Mirage because we're doing this together. Absolutely. Mirage, let's have you make your role for kind of studying the situation. Then I'm going to come to Lord Bloom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, um, can I hold off on the effects of uh, Squeak Tunes um, move until I know which, whether I want to clear a thing, a mood, or I want to take plus one forward, or should I decide for that now? How should you decide before you make this roll? Okay. So since I will roll with, again, I think I could clear fear and then roll with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, no, I think that this is, I'm still more motivated by fear. And my other stuff. It's a five, so yeah. The five plus yeah, the what the support did, and I only have one bond with Lord Bloom, so I can't even get it up to a seven if I wanted to. Absolutely. So uh, I think. Do, do we get an XP on a miss? We do. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yes, you should be marking XP on a miss. That's, yeah. that, that seems to be a primary path for all of you uh, here. <laughs> uh, but I think as you kind of sit down to look at this uh, and examine this, uh, you're being careful not to touch anything cold. You don't want to touch anything cold, but I think there's a moment when you do kind of touch the outer ring of this sigil and you'll feel that taker magic, the contract that you have, as I mentioned, the, the magic that, that you have is about consuming and changing things at its base heart and there is a kind of pyrotechnic bloom uh and you will see those sigils and the books kind of spark and catch fire in here and kind of a whoosh as they they go around uh uh and the the, the flames and this is not a particularly well ventilated room i'm just going to mention that uh as well here uh but it kind of uh i don't know if you pull back or you uh uh stay there but suddenly uh the the materials have ignited uh lord bloom Oh, oh, sorry. I thought there was a, a question coming. <laughs> it's more uh, Lord Bloom. What do you do? Um, I think if any of the swords are unattended, I will grab them and then like go to to the exit. Um, time to leave. Um, yeah, try to like usher everyone out. Yeah, scale. Do you still have the? Broomstick in your hand, or the former broomstick now sword? I you... think so. Um, just you know, it feels comfortable. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So I, I don't need a second invitation to get out, but I'm like you know, um, ushering Squeak Tune out. You yeah. know, I, I'm quite bemused by by this callous um, process on the body. You know, it makes me grin or even chuckle. But uh, fire, yeah, I don't like fire. Yeah. So let's get out. Uh, so Lord Bloom, you, you said you, kind of the first at that door, uh, uh, you, uh, uh, unlock it, uh, uh, there to, uh, open up and come up and like, as soon as you get that door open, it's a boom, 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 boom. And the music is coming down these stairs and you'll move your way up and you are in the shittiest dance club you've ever been in. As soon as you touch the top step, you hear that because your feet 
are stuck. There's so much spilt liquid and pop and stuff and and your feet immediately get that that feeling there and it's clearly it's a uh, 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 an illegal club uh uh because like they have no smoking regulations at all in here people are are you know you can smell the cigarettes probably uh uh just a, the haze of that in here uh and it seems to be a a club uh, uh of of punks who are are in here as you kind of get to the top of the stairs let us say if i may that you do not look like you fit in here <laughs> there's a bunch of them that turn and look at you lots of bad piercings and you know bad tattoos and uh you know a a, a real uh, uh, trying to be Euro trash, look to them here uh, as as a number of them turn to to face you. What do you do, Lord Bloom? Well, I don't want everyone here to burn to death. Uh, so yeah, that'll be a while because it's mostly the papers and things downstairs. But eventually, it, uh, left unattended, yeah. it'll be a problem. Yeah. Um... <laughs> You don't think they have working smoke alarms? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I was trying to figure out some way I could alert them, but I think at this point we mostly need to get out of here. Like, do they look hostile or are they just noticing us? I'm going to say they look hostile because you've you're you're dressed very nicely. Uh uh this is their kind of probably illegal uh, yeah, uh gathering yeah. place and you've just popped up from downstairs. Mm -hmm. Well, I do have a sword. So uh I, I'm not <laughs> I, I, I don't want to start fighting, but um Do you want to brandish your sword and attempt to drive them back? I think um, no. I think I want to use some kind of magic here. I think we're okay. ending up with invoke contract because I don't think any of my moves have here. Okay. Um, I mean, I could try something with glamours, but I don't think that's going to make things better. Yeah. Um, so I think this oh, yeah. is trying to just make them step aside. Like, I, I just want them to step aside so that we can pass through. Okay. Uh, and so what do you do to invoke contract? You're trying to frighten them back? Um... Yeah, probably, or I feel like I, I have the sword, and that can be kind of a symbol of authority. Yeah. And sure, they're punks. They don't like authority, but that kind of makes it more fun to impose it on them, like brandishing the sword and just saying, step aside and let us pass. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to do this magically, we do this invoke con contract. Yeah. Okay. What do you want to roll that with? I'm rolling with power at this point. Okay. I have a plus two. That's an eight. That is an eight. Uh... We have to choose one. Yeah. So I guess fight and intimidate or impress okay. is the thing there. Yeah. Uh I think that uh you will do that. But I think the catch is that that like you have to stay holding the sword and pointing it at them to to keep that effect up. Uh does That's that feel good. like a reasonable catch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh so is it squeak tune or scale that is next up 
the the the, the stairs behind Lord Bloom. I think I'm lost. Okay. Um. Oh no, I'm scared of Lord Bloom right now. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, so squeak to you'll hit the top of that stairs and oh, everything here is sticky. Dislike. Uh, yeah, and and Lord Bloom is is pointing the sword, and there are these punks that are kind of like uh, kind of falling back away from him. The blade is out and uh, blazing. I, I, I'm falling back. <laughs> I'm scared. Lord Bloom is being really weird today. Um, actually, I mean, if Squeak Shun like wants to hide behind me, that's okay. Yeah, that's I'll allow it. I, I, I might end up doing that. But actually, Lil, I want to double check if I was supposed to mark any of my moods, the ones that I like failed rolls on before or something. Uh what's the most recent one you failed? I think it was it was either joy or fear because those were the only two that I was rolling today. So let's have you mark joy. Okay, I will mark it. So and, should I mark it every time I fail? Not necessarily, but I think in the situation that we're in right now and have been in for a little bit before, we're going to keep it. It's a sort of heightened uh, experience. Okay. So we'll add that as Sounds part good. of the hard move. Okay. Um, so what do you want to do? I do fall back, stay here, escape. <laughs> I think I want to run away. <laughs> this is this absolutely is unsafe. I think it's pretty easy for you to escape uh, if you want to make that roll. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Um, clearly r rolling with fear. Um, so I'm scared. And it's like I'm doing that thing again where I'm like slinking down and then like like backing up um, in a very animalistic kind of fashion. Absolutely. Ooh, I, I really get out of dodge. Uh, that is a, that is another fifteen. Yes. Okay. So you will vanish out before anyone can, uh, uh, see that, and I think you will slip past the, uh. Uh, uh, the uh, the bouncer at the door, out uh, the the next steps up out into the to the night air. Um, there is a panel van out on the street, uh, and there are some figures that are hanging about. Uh, and I think that the the first glimpse you get at them. They don't look human, but then they look more human the second glance you get at them. But they have not seen you with that role. You are out of the way of them. We'll come back to you in just one second. Uh, Mirage, uh, Squeak Tunes, whew, cheesed it. Uh, Lord Bloom is up uh, holding these uh, vampire, or sorry, these punk cultists uh, at bay. Uh, and uh, a scale is kind of behind you. Uh, are you making your way out as well? I stare at the fire for a bit, like, oh, it's warm, it's nice. It is getting nice and warm in here, toasty. Yeah, but I will realize that this might be dangerous, actually. But uh, I, I linger, right? Or maybe scale has to push me a little to get kept moving or something. Um, and then I will, but uh, we'll look at the flames like, yeah, you are, you're kind of nice. And then I will go. Uh, scale. Yeah, so I think I get into the kind of dance floor area. And um, I, I think I nod appreciatively at Lord Bloom's brandishing. And I'll be much more laid back. But if anyone looks at me crooked in a way I don't like, 
Um, I have no problem uh, opening hostilities. So uh, uh, I, I think there is that that pause where uh, to you, Lord Bloomscale, kind of deciding who wants to kind of go first. Mirage uh, uh, is indicated that they are 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 moving a little bit uh, slowly. The smoke is starting to come up from below. Uh, uh, and I do think you sh- that may crack the attention of these cultists uh, when when the smoke reaches them uh, and uh, they will kind of start to break and run for the uh, the exits. Uh, uh, the, basically there are two ways out, one kind of behind the bar kind of back room way up and the, the main sort of dance floor way where most of them are kind of heading out, up, out onto the street. Uh, do you want to permit that to happen? Lord Bloom? Um, yeah, if they're getting out of here, that's fine. Yeah. Um, that means they're out of our way, so we can get out of here. Absolutely. And scale, you are, are you cool with them? Everybody running? Yeah, yeah, not cool with them running. Maraj, you follow behind or uh, alongside? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm following Lord Bloom. I think that might be a good choice. So Squeak Tune, you are actually out on the street for a little bit. <laughs> Excuse me. One sneeze only. Uh, uh, for a little bit before uh, uh, people start flooding out, uh, is there anything you want to do? You're in a safe place. No one can see you. So there's a van and there are figures around. Yeah. Um, Are any of the figures in the van? There are a, a couple of figures in the van. Uh like there's somebody in a, in a driver's seat, passenger seat, a couple out on the street with the side panel open and a couple in the back of the van. Okay. Before that, I would like to invoke the shinies and okay. ask uh, what significant object I pilfered from the previous scene. Uh, oh, let's see. Uh, I think you would have like grabbed off of one of these uh, punks that actually most of them are just kind of punks that were down here, but one of them was one of those uh, cultists. They had the sigil on them. And I think you essentially uh, uh, lifted their wallet, uh, broke the little chain off of it, let it drop. You've got their 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 crappy leather wallet that they had on a chain. Great, yes, <laughs> yeah. The visual of yeah, of Squeak Two like escaping is like getting super scared, but then like on the way out, still like snapping a chain, <laughs> absolutely, <on the> <laughs> and taking it. <laughs> yeah. Oh <my> <laughs> um, uh, so I. What do you want to do? Oh, I want to. I think I want to like wait under the van. No, uh, no, no. I want to know what's going on with the van. I'm so then let's have you roll study. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do it. Um, I think I might be. I mean, I was scared, but like, I think my attitude towards uh, this van is more. Uh, oh, I'm scared. I don't know. I want to roll the other stats. This is what I'm trying to justify it. Sure. Um, I'm like, oh, am I calm? I can't be angry. Uh, um, Let's say I'm curious. Okay. So it's calm. That feels right. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a six. 
That is a six. Do you have any bonds you want to burn to kick that to a seven? I. Or are you happy I, with the six? Because you get to mark XP. The good news is you get to mark XP. Uh, hmm. I'll. Yeah, I think I'll keep it as is. Okay. There is that moment uh, when you're kind of going to peak and you'll feel this hand grip around your neck and this breath come over your shoulder and it smells like coffee and vodka and the grave. And you'll hear this figure say, I didn't expect to see one of the changed here tonight. What is going on? And his grip is strong. Uh, and it is, in fact, Zetcher Mercy, vampire puck cultist, who has you gripped around the throat right now. Uh, we'll come back to you in just one second, uh, because I think there is a sudden change in the situation as these punks come running up out of this sort of sub-basement uh, a club and and kind of roll, roll out onto the street here and the figures in the van like are all kind of like suddenly shocked uh uh and and what is going on uh and the thing that you will see squeak tune as they do that as these figures kind of stand up they look like they're more punks uh but none of them look like they're alive they are moving, but they are clearly not still alive in the conventional sense. Are they, do they seem like undead, like vampires? Or like... Well, they seem undead in some way, shape, or form. Okay, uh, got it. Uh, you've chased these punks out. You've uh, uh, done that. Uh Scale, Mirage, Lord Bloom, I assume you're following behind them out? No. Okay. You will come out onto the street. You'll come up. And I think that you will get a chance to see what's going on uh, before the folks in the van have a chance to do anything because there is this chaos. Uh, and there is a little bit of smoke uh, as, the, the, as you come out. Uh, and these punks are running, and you can see across the way is a white panel van. Side doors are open. There are a couple of punks there uh, that are watching, but don't look right. Uh, uh, but I think you also see past the van, uh, you will see uh, somebody has a squeak tune uh, by the throat from behind. Like long nasty claw fingers from behind scale yeah i mean unfortunate for this guy um yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna intervene directly okay <laughs> um Is it a group, or if I do this, am I just taking on this one guy? Well, uh, you, if you want to, you could take on this uh, uh, gang of uh, uh, undead uh, uh, cultists to clear yeah. the decks. You have a I mean, move if for I that. Face a large group of minions or mooks. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, what do you want to roll that with? Yeah, I'm angry. Okay. Somewhat predictably. Um. This is your element. Yeah, yeah. But also, like, I was itching for a fight. And, you know, if there was anyone but, but Squeak Tune, maybe I would start talking. But, uh, no. <laughs> this is not loud. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's have you roll it. Wow. Well, there we go. So. It's a four total. I think as you go running towards them, like pushing these punks aside, uh, 
there is a leap as three of these punks jump on you and you expected them to be maybe like zombies or or you know like like maybe possessed things but they are much stronger than that and they are on you uh uh and they are biting at you okay. right now there is a um a result for a miss on that move yeah uh so are these different guys that we didn't see before no i think these are the vampires uh okay. uh uh so let, yeah, let's escalate the situation i think that you will throw them off like you're kind of in the middle of them you throw and kind of scatter those cultists away but as you do that you'll hear the sound of a and you'll see a little ways down the block the side panel of another van open up okay and you will see another group roll out of that van uh so you've scattered the ones that are kind of were kind of in the way blocking the way between you all and where squeak tune and zetra mercy are uh and uh we come back uh mirage i i want to come to you because you've kind of been uh following along here the the semi-vampiric cultists have been in front of you have been scattered by scale there's another group a little ways down the block that are starting to come this way and this other horrible figure has squeak tune by the throat oh i don't know they're not supposed to be able to they're not supposed to do that um yeah you know what these are vampires that's pretty clear here right yeah so maybe I can distract them. Um, I'll draw some blood from the dreaming, from the dreams of a nearby whatever vampire, maybe one of them still snoozing, and just have it on me and I'll like wave it a little, like come here, come here. Because La Bloom is next to me and he still has that sword, right? Yeah. And I uh, want to get them away from Squeak, squeak Tune without going on trying to hit them or something. Oh, so you're trying to get is that your mercy or you the the, the ones Look. that were in front of you, scale has no. knocked kind of out of the way. No, no, the guy who has squeak to. I want them to focus on me. Okay. Uh so I think while, that while that, La Bloom is standing next to me with his sword. That is conflict. Yeah, okay. What do you want to roll that with? Uh anger, I think. Yeah. But they're not they're not manhandling one of us around, right? Not like that. Uh-uh. Oh, it's a four. Wow. No, I'm not very good at that. So I think there is a moment when Zetra Mercy is there holding Squeak Tune. And then there's a blur. And he is across the street in a dash. Oh, wow. uh, 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 and he slams Squeak Tune into you. And there oh, is no. that moment when your two skulls knock off of each other. Uh, uh, and he knocks you down. Uh, mark, mark a an element, or sorry, mark a mood. Uh, uh and unfortunately, he still has a hold of Squeak Tune. Uh-huh. He is closer now to Lord Bloom. Uh-huh. Uh, but uh, you have kind of been knocked, knocked back. Uh-huh. Oh, should I mark something? <laughs> no, no, like you're already in a bad there. position. <laughs> Okay. But I think I think I think imagine it's that that you know the shot of of Evil Dead where the camera is going real fast. You we get that of you across the street and then the clonk. Uh, uh, but and he still got you held by the throat, and he smells terrible. Uh Lord Bloom. Well, I've had quite enough of this. 
Um, <laughs> think I, I just want to uh, go big at this point. Okay. Um, so he he said that uh, he, yeah he he said we he, he knows we we are uh, changed. That was uh, he noticed that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Because in fact, uh, I believe if I remember this right, let me check this. Oh no, it is in fact Path that had the interactions with uh, Zetra Mercy. So uh, you all don't know exactly who this person is. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, uh, I am going to say you have, um, yeah, yeah, uh, you would do well to uh leave this place and take your rotten minions with you or you will face the wrath of the courts and i want to i want to use my glamour again here okay um and like i i have the actual i have an actual sword right uh, but this is me like growing a bit like increasing my stature and looking like I'm summoning some kind of like glowing armor and and really like looking like a dangerous warrior. So I think we still do that with conflict, but sure. uh, the fiction is, I mean, I think we see you utilizing your glamour in a way that he probably doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he probably knows that change can do minor illusions, but this is something different uh uh something that he's not expecting so uh what do you want to roll that with i'm rolling with power because i want to put this guy down like in a metaphorical sense and i roll snake guys i've been rolling so good all day <laughs> and that there's well i have three bonds I could theoretically push that to a seven, I guess. You could. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. Ooh, uh, bo Ooh, nice. Bold, bold choice. I'm doing it. Uh, absolutely. So, like, you, uh, that that's that's you, you know, you've got your friends around you. Mm -hmm. You have to do this. They, they, he, he's got squeak tune. Uh, so you get to pick two. Get to pick two. Um, so create. There was something there. Create an op. Oh, ex yeah. Create an opportunity for you or your allies. Okay. Right? Make it so that Squeak June can get out of his grip. Okay. Um, let's 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 narrate that, and then I'm gonna have you make your second pick. Yeah. Squeak sure. June, What happens that gives you the opportunity to 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 get out of dodge uh, from this guy's grip? I wonder if it's some, well, it's something that Lord Bloom said that like, I, and like invoked some kind of mood in them, and that mood like it's just like a twitch like in the hand mm -hmm. that and that's all I need. Um, You're out slide of there. Out. <laughs> yeah. Kind of kind of drop to the to the street, Lord Bloom. What do you want to do for your second pick? If I pick, you get what you want from them. I feel, I mean, it feels big that they just pick up and leave, but maybe at least we. That's that's maybe... more like like if they had something that that you wanted. Oh, okay, kind okay. of thing. Um, um, uh, yeah. uh... um, well, and extricate yourself from the situation. That's just me, right? Uh. uh... You can also say if I mean if you wanted Squeak Tune to be free and clear. Well, I would like for all of us to get away, but create an opportunity for you or your allies. And I think for my allies in this case, like drawing enough attention of of the vampire and and the the others 
that they can leave if they want to. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, there's a certain focus on you. Scale is probably the other person that has a, a little bit of attention on them, but Squeak Tune and Mirage, like like Zetcher has has forgotten about them. Uh, but he is then up over on you. Uh, and he comes at you and there is that like palm fist that hits you and you go flying back uh, 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 into a car and kind of hit that front windscreen that kind of crumples in. Uh, so Mark, uh, Mark a mood of your choice. That's the, the harm. You can always mark drained if you don't want to. And you've also got, uh, uh, here on the 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 characters uh uh and, and drained represents essentially your magic kind of being drained and fictionally you need to like spend time to recover that but uh so you mark that is already marked oh yeah did you do that last time um presumably i don't remember yeah we haven't had a chance to to catch catch your breath yeah, and regain yeah, your strength uh let me come to Squeak Tune. Squeak Tune, you see that uh, Lord Bloom gives you the opportunity to get free, draws uh, this figure's attention away from you and Mirage, uh, but then this thing gums at Lord Bloom. And you can see that he hits Lord Bloom and he tries to get that sword away from Bloom. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, I feel like. Oh man. I feel like instead of being well, instead of being helpful, um, like I feel like Squeak Tune is torn and <laughs> going yeah. through inner yeah. turmoil. Yeah, this is very dangerous. You've been hurt. Uh, things have gone very badly. Uh. You could easily get out of here. It's so scary. And Lord Bloom just helped me. I'm still a little bit scared of Lord Bloom. I and I'm also just very scared. But we're in a role inner I conflict. I feel like I should help. Uh I have inner turmoil. Absolutely. Okay. Um, rolling with fear, because okay. that makes sense. Wait, do I? Oops. Do I have it marked? Oh, not yet. Okay. Scared. Very scared. <laughs> ah, this looks right. Um five, six. Oh, oh, seven, actually. Seven. Nice. So you have a choice. You can get out of here. Like, that's a choice. You can mark sinking and stay. Or you can mark a mood and stay. I'll I'll mark sinking. Okay. And I and like I think vis the, there's like a visual aspect to this too, like to squeak to and like squeak to just kind of like like they're like the split second of like I don't know how to make this choice, and then it's just like like when they're like no, I have to, but then like they're their body again is just like their face almost like it, like it elongates in a again in a weird way because they're just like kind of like sinking more into their like their changed aspect mm -hmm. um and what and, do you do then you've decided to stay but yes. what do you do i I give you five minutes. We take our second break. We come back yeah, to you, and then we come back to scale. So let's just take a quick five. Okay. So squeak tune. What do you do? I am going to invoke my contract. Um. I think. Um. Yeah, I I think what I want. Should I describe what I want to do? Yeah, tell then... me what it is you want to do first. What I want to do, I see one of the options there is change the environment. Okay. 
and I am going to uh, basically change this current landscape that we're in uh, into what I'm used to, which is, what is it called? The Where I was taken to. Okay. And because that space, it's like, it's like a, you know, like a Disney forest. Okay. Is the visuals of it. Um, but it's basically like everything will be different uh, for like for everyone here, including because like right now it's kind of like the vampire cultists, the sorry, the punk cultist vampires are like it's their turf. They know what's going on. They have control of the situation. OK, I like that. It so. won't last that long, but I think that's a perfect thing for you to do uh this is a greater power so i want you to mark sinking again yes and you're asking Ooh. for something big you're essentially kind of yes. reaching out into the undertow to kind of bring a piece of where you were before out into this world so this would be a very bad one to miss a roll on yes <laughs> it's a i yep I was already sinking, so it makes sense that I am just sinking further. And then, like, when I'm scared, I look to um, the most powerful thing that I remember, which is what hurt me. Uh, what do you want to roll that with? <laughs> with fear. That's very scared. Fair. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. This is a this is a twelve. That is a twelve. So, uh, on a twelve with that invoke contract, uh, what do you think the 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 catch is? The the thing that you have to do or sacrifice or promise to have this happen? I think. I mean, okay, let's see. There was the the takers have an agent here, right? Yeah. I feel like I need to like I owe one of them. Okay. Uh I think that essentially you make a promise to the to the takers if they will do this. And I think that somewhere else in the city, Mr. Pinch hears your call and says, okay, and gives you what you need. Uh, so uh, it, the world changes around all of you. Uh, I think all of you can feel it. They, the vampires probably don't understand, but I think scale, bloom, mirage, you all realize that Someone has echoed the far lands of the undertow here. It's probably terrifying, but it also throws these vampires completely off as like describe these woods and then I'm going to come to scale. Squeak tune. Okay. Um, everything. First of all, there's like, there's a scent of vanilla in the air. And, and then, um, like, oh, should I describe the woods or what this the, current thing? The woods like? here. The woods here. Yeah. Then what, what do we yeah. see? Um, I mean, it's a very classic, like, <laughs> like deciduous forest. <laughs> okay. Um, since like most Disney, uh, the sort of uh the the Grim Brothers deep woods uh yeah like a lot of like grand gnarled oak trees um and it there's like there's a lot of shadows but then there's also a lot of like sunshine like pooling in between uh the trees so it's like and then the ground is like carpeted with moss yeah 
uh probably moonlight in the case of this but yeah like like it is it is it is enveloping scale you've thrown these vampires back there was another group coming your way you kind of heard and saw what happened with lord bloom and search of mercy and then the situation changes um and i think um yeah i think you you don't see me for a moment right and then i'm i'm going to where i know lord bloom is and you just see me kind of erupt or appear out of this kind of dense uh ferns um uh, to, to stand above or behind this struggling pair. Uh, I mean, I got the idea that uh, this vampire wanted a sword, so I'm going to give him the sword. Okay. Uh, so you may roll conflict. Uh, I think Squeaktoon has set you up such okay. that you may roll with advantage. Okay. Um, so I think I'm... I think I'm rolling... I was thinking, like, am I fearful or joyful but i think now that i'm back in the realm so to speak i'm i'm going with power okay um and i'm rolling with plus 1 for inner fur furnace because i have angry marked okay uh, uh so it with advantage plus 2 okay oh look at that <laughs> not an 18 but uh but uh 13 uh, so you get to pick three things. Yeah. Uh, so I am going to inflict harm. Okay. Um, I am going to avoid reprisals, harm, or a cost. Okay. Um, and I... Hmm. I mean, I think, yeah, can create an opportunity, seems. Absolutely. I maybe, think you've got yeah. them pinned. I mean, they're not quite dead because they're pretty tough, but you have run them through and you have them hoisted like a butterfly uh, on this. And they are shocked at, at that strike because they didn't see you coming in this woods. Um. What what do you look like different? Yeah, I mean for for I mean if 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 I'm holding him up like a butterfly, he's definitely seeing it. But maybe Lord Bloom is seeing it too. Um, you know, anyone who lays an eye on me sees this fearsome creature, this shambling monster, um, you know, designed for carnage. Um, and yeah, I mean, like fitting into the shadows in this forest a little bit too well. Okay. Mirage, uh, what do you do? Uh, there's, uh, the various, like a uh, dozen of these like low vampire cultists are kind of now wandering in these woods. Scale has... Set your mercy like pinned. Uh, uh, what do you want to do? So Lord Bloom is basically saved already. Uh, uh, Set your mercy doesn't appear to be a threat to Lord Bloom right now. Okay, I will. Yeah, because this is very close to where I was before, and I'm shook a little. So I will reach into the dream. And I will take some cold into my heart and I will reach into the dream and grab one of these swords. Just, you know. And then I will stand next to my friends and look uh, to whoever wants trouble with me because I might not be real, I might not be all there. But right now, I am I am unhappy with the situation. Let's have you roll cobbler. Yeah. And maybe I'll cut myself and... Uh, We'll see. I'll roll this with, again, power. And the dice room, be nice this time, okay? No, it's a six, but 
that means that I get can mark my bond with Lord Bloom and put it up to a seven. So absolutely. Uh so if you take it is as envisioned, mm -hmm. I think that's simple enough that you will have one, another one of these blades. Yeah. Um uh and we'll assume that it has has a couple of tags on it, but right now you you got that. Mm -hmm. Uh uh so so ow maybe 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 we come down we dial this down a little you run away I mean, I, I hope he thinks he's talking to someone reasonable. I'm not I, 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 he's looking down at you, Lord Bloom. Uh, Golden boy. Uh, 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 look, they're very, very painful. Perhaps we have like, like, co ow, conversation. Uh, parlay. <laughs> You're talking right now, aren't you? I am talking right now. Uh, if you say something we want to hear, then maybe we will let you continue talking. So, it looks like you got some of the swords. Was that a question? No, 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 I'm I, 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 I preambling here a little. Um, uh, 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 and you see, he does kind of like, like maybe one of the, the, the vampire like pops their heads out of the woods and he's like gesturing for them to stay back. Someone summoned the sword a sword like sword like a big thing but they didn't how do i put this uh they didn't do a very good job of containing it and a number of different people picked up on it being around. I heard about it. Uh, another faction from my posse heard about it. The scavenger demons heard about it. The ghosts heard about it. Uh, we're looking to, like, people are looking to pull it back together because it's a powerful thing that somebody spent a lot of energy summoning into this world but kind of didn't do it right. So we were sitting on this place because we knew that one of the Exarch Anarchs was here. And I was perhaps ow, a little over presumptuous and a little handsy with the hands and and he like turns his head a full 180 to look back at you scale and at you squeak tune. And he says, I am very sorry. Please accept my sincere apologies. Do you... I, I, we accept with a favor. That's one of your uh, contract things, right? Like a bond obligating me here. Okay, well, you got me on a, on, help me up on this, this sword. Your friend, by the way, I, I, I got to admire your stamina because, because you are not letting this, this blade down at all. Uh, so yeah. Uh, yes, I, I will owe you a favor. I promise this. I pledge this. 
I'm going to let him slide off. Oh! Oh, that hurt all the way down. Mm. Kind of flumps to to the ground. Sits. And he'll he'll look around at 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 you, Bloom, to make sure that 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 you are okay with the situation. And he'll turn to you, Mirage, because you also have a blade and are standing over him and kind of are we are we all cool? And I imagine that at this point the the woods is probably starting to 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 fade away. So I'm going to stand up. I want to tell my colleagues to get in their vans. And I'm going to give you a way to contact me. Does that seem like a reasonable course of action? Yeah, give me your number. Pull out a much nicer phone than you have. He'll exchange digits. And uh, he will look around and he will say, I heard some stuff went down with the courts tonight. Yeah, we're getting blamed for something that didn't happen. That we didn't do. These blades fly around willy-nilly. But people can give them a purpose. So if one of these blades did something, it wasn't just coincidence. Now, may I take my leave of you? You can fuck off. That's what you can do. <laughs> I and remember this the next time you try to get fancy with one of the changed. Uh, I will keep that in mind. And now I am going to fuck off. And he backs away from you all very carefully. Boy, Mirage, this sword, you're not really a sword person, are you? Or are you a sword person? Not a sword person. I'm not a person at all. Ah. That I will say that sword feels very good in your hand. Mm, yeah. Feels nice. Yeah, I'll keep it. Just, you know, because it feels so nice. It feels so solid. Uh, uh, and is that your mercy? Uh, uh, and his his boys roll into their vans and they drive off into the night. I think in the distance you hear the the, the like drunken shouts of the various uh, 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 anarch cultists uh, and others uh, uh, in the evening who've run away from the club, uh, and. I think you all can catch your breath for a minute. And I think next time we'll figure out where you go from here. Yeah. Um, I might turn to um, Mirage. Mirage, are you okay? No. Where does it hurt? It doesn't. That's... That's... Um, it does. The sword can be hurt. Cannot hurt. Well... I'll take out uh one of the two um wrapped baked goods 
I don't know what this means. Um, and I'll I'll hand it to you. Thank you. What am I supposed to do with that? I will keep it safe for you. You can eat it. I don't feel hungry. Sometimes you have to eat even when you don't feel hungry. Not a trap, right? So you wouldn't do that. This is not a trap, right? You wouldn't do that. No. Okay. And Mirage will kind of juggle the sword and the pastry somehow. Try and nibble on the pastry a little. Squeak Tune, do you want to roll uh, support? Yes. What are you rolling that oh, with? Sorry, I forgot to say. Um, I think I was rolling that with calm, probably. That makes sense. Um, it could have been calm or sorrow. Um, I'll, I'll say calm. Okay. Um, and I rolled a seven. Okay. Uh, so Mirage, if you wish, you may clear a marked mood. I will clear sorrow. Yeah. And I think I will at least kind of I won't won't completely let go of the sword, but I will put it up or away or something. Okay. But uh yeah, it, it helps and it helps the 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 face becomes a little clearer again. It's not so not so uh, unreal. There's a little reality coming back. Okay. Uh, Laura Bloom, what do we see of you in this this final bit before we kind of close out the episode? Uh, I kind of dismiss this um, uh, glamour and I'm still holding the sword and I think this is where, when I realized the, the pull that it has mm -hmm. and that that's worrying me, but I also don't let it go. Okay. And scale? I mean, I, I wonder if I kind of see this in kind of inner, well, not capitalized inner turmoil, but, uh, um, and uh, I will, I think I'll be sitting on a curb and the sword will be like, uh, like point on the, on the ground, uh, hilt on my knee or on my leg or whatever. And I'm, I'm kind of nodding at Lord Bloom and saying, yeah, see, I mean, uh, we all, we all like the taste of it, right? Nice. Uh, End of session, session uh, uh, moves. Uh, did, uh, so let's start uh, with uh, Squeak Tune. Uh, did you express your changeling, your changed nature, your other self? Okay. Yes. Mark an XP for that. Did you express your humanity? I think I perhaps think so, there at the end, definitely. Yeah, at the last moment. Uh, did you interact with your entanglements or your rival? Yes. Okay. My... Yeah. Oh, actually, n did I? Well, Mr. Bench, it's now. Oh, yeah, I think so. Yes, definitely. You get an XP for that. So that's three XP. Mm. Uh, Mirage, uh, uh, you expressed your changed nature. I think we saw that. Um, yes. So mark an XP for that. Uh, did you express your humanity? Earlier, maybe when we were, when I was uh, kind of scared about the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. So mark an XP for that. Did you engage or interact with your 
uh, rival or your entanglements? I don't think so. It's had nothing to do with the. Uh, I, I try to protect Lord Bloom, but that nothing to do with song or song. Okay. Or X. Uh, so two XP. Uh, a scale. Uh, I think we saw you definitely express your changed nature. Yeah. Uh, did you express your humanity? Um. I mean the the only. The only thing that's jumping out at me right now is this kind of um, desire to protect Squeechune um, in kind of a way we haven't seen before. Maybe. Yeah, I like that. Mark XP for that. And you also interact with uh, with uh, Hopscotch Take Back, so that's another point. Okay. Uh, uh, Lord Bloom, uh, did you... Uh, express your changed nature. Yeah, um, quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, certainly stepping up to the play. Uh, did you express your humanity? Yeah, I think partly by trying to protect my friends, but also at least trying to find a way to not have everyone burn to death in the in the club. Um, Absolutely, yeah. You certainly uh, stopped and, and focused on that. So that's two. Did you interact with either your rival or something from your entanglements? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, so two points. Uh, so we've got three sessions left. Uh, next time we'll kind of cut to where you are and figure out what the, the, the next steps are. Uh, are in this and draw some some threads together uh i would like to do a quick uh stars and wishes uh again uh the wishes being things that you definitely want to see uh as we, we go here uh squeak tune yeah my star is to um uh <laughs> again the escalating of the situation <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, I think when uh, what was what was their name? Uh, when Zester Mercy showed up, I thought that was very cool. Um, it it definitely gave like it really focused, um, the conflict, and so I thought that was really fun. And then also star to everyone else for saving Squeak Tune from. <laughs> from one trouble after another <laughs> uh, thanks everyone <laughs> start to all of you uh anything wishes wise e mm -hmm. i guess yeah my wish is to uh get sunken and then okay. see what that looks like what that Absolutely. You're, you're certainly working yes. your way there. Yes. How many ticks do you have? I you're have at four. four. Interesting. Yes. Good. We can certainly arrange for that next time. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, Mirage. Uh, yeah, stars all around. This was really funny. And I, I like how Squeaktoon always runs from one trouble and into the next worst trouble there is. That is uh, kind of nice, and I also love Lord Lord Broom with the with the sword in his hand. That was very manly, I think. And it's nice having Scale back, mm -hmm. and also it's nice to see Scale fight something that that I feel that is a bit oh, that is a part of the character, and I like that it's being explored. Um, wishes for next time would be that we get some more support scenes going, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Talk a little amongst ourselves without uh, swords flying around our ears, maybe. Absolutely. Um, yeah. That, that yeah, be. we'll make sure we start with that uh, next time uh, in, a, in a place where you can chat with each other, do some RP interactions, and do those support moves. Uh, scale. Um. I mean, I guess a lot of um the the squeak tune joy train of of 
uh, ambling from one disaster to the other and, and nicking something on the way out continues and it's giving me life. Um, uh, I love this kind of sequence of um, uh, what whatever it is that Galadriel says when, when the ring is offered to her from Lord Gloom, you know, I shall be terrible uh, and you shall love me from Lord. <laughs> so that, that was uh, good to see. Um, and yeah, I think um, this kind of uh, like loss aspect that we saw in Mirage uh, this week. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe sad, but it's still a, a star. Um, and Lowell, um, I, I guess I always admire slash feel pity for any GM who's got to put up with like three or four misses in a row. <laughs> because, <laughs> but I guess uh, more generally a star for the yowling uh, panther because that was um, marvelous. Yeah, I, I definitely will have the panther return at some point when uh, <laughs> another another miss is rolled. So that's that's out there. Yeah. Um, uh, wishes, I think, yeah, I'd like some kind of quiet time between the characters before okay. you have to uh, deal with the fallout. Um, Absolutely. And Andish. Yeah, uh, most of the things have been mentioned. Um, I think a, a star to everyone for leaning into the magical stuff. And, and really going with that. That was a lot of fun. Um, and to the dice for just rolling high and low the whole session, there was no in between here. It was all, <laughs> all really good or really bad. Uh, so that was, that, that made it interesting. But uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun. Uh, wishes. Um, No, nothing, nothing additional. Absolutely. That is fair. Uh, I had a great time. Uh, I enjoyed this. I, I, I like seeing the characters interact. Uh, I like being able to add a little more of our spin, our backstory and, and have some ongoing stuff. Uh, I actually really liked the, your choices on uh, study mo moves today as well. What, what you asked about, what you uh, uh, chose to focus in on. Uh, I am uh, going to stop the recording. <laughs>